So um, welcome to uh, this month's webinar. Um, and today we're talking about using visuals and imagery to make sales. Now, a lot of the time we talk about text uh, and text, you know, we always say is uh, content has always been king on the internet because it gets indexed and all that other wonderful stuff. Uh, but in magazines and in social media and, um, you know, other places, images actually work better, even if it's just to get people to your text, right? And uh, get people interested in your product or service. Okay, and by the way, yes, we are going to be interrupted more than likely <laughs> by uh, some folks that needed work on stuff in the office. I couldn't get them any other day, so yep. this is the time. That's what we get for being a small to medium sized business, but uh, thank you for joining us. This webinar is for you if uh, you sell something, uh, obviously, hopefully most of us do. Um, if you, if people tend not to buy when you first approach them, you know, so we don't do impulse sales usually in the aviation industry. This is not retail. This is not selling candy bars at the checkout stand, right? right. This is something that's a little more complicated than that and it takes a little more effort than that. Um, so you may have a complex product or service or uh, you may sell to large organizations. A lot of us sell to um, uh, the large charter organizations sell to the airlines, sell to to other fairly large organizations that make things a little more complicated. Or um, if your product or service is a large financial investment. So once again, if your situation is simpler than that, you may not need to go to quite this much hassle. <laughs> <laughs> but if you know how, you'll be miles better off, right? Yep. Okay. Cool. So um, I'm Paula Williams. And I'm John Williams. And we are ABCI, and ABCI's mission is... To help all you ladies and gentlemen out there sell more products and services in the aviation world. Absolutely. Um, so thank you for joining us, and once again, we do uh, these webinars once a month for people in the aviation industry in sales or marketing. So uh, one of the first things that we want to talk about whenever we talk about means and methods of sales and marketing, we want to talk about the fact that we don't ever want to do what we call random acts of marketing, right? Absolutely not. Okay. And no, no, we want to talk about it. We absolutely don't want to do them. <laughs> okay, so we will talk about it, but we won't ever do them. Why are random acts of marketing bad? Yeah, because they usually don't do anything but make you worse off than you were. Exactly. You um, might get an immediate spike, but then it's going to nosedive because you didn't fall through. Absolutely. Sometimes we get what we call, you know, accidental successes in marketing <laughs> where, you know, you have a, a great ad that performs really well uh, accidentally. Um, that sometimes happens and it used to happen more often in the past. Uh, if you look at some of the great advertising textbook examples of things that worked in the past that maybe weren't as well planned out as things need to be now. Uh, to, to make things work. So we need to know what we're doing and why. So rather than just thinking about how do we get the coolest image or the, the, the best, um, most stunning uh, photograph of an airplane that we are working on or trying to sell or, or whatever the situation is, we need to think about what do we need people to do, know, and feel as a result of using this particular image, right, mm -hmm. in our marketing. So in order to do that, we need to think about where in our sales pipeline are we going to use this image. So there's one type of image that we would use in what we call phase one marketing, which is, you know, advertising and prospecting, right? Yep. So these would be things like magazine ads or um, internet ads or uh, billboards. billboards, you know, trade show signs other kinds of things where people may not know who you are, but they know they need a product or service that you might provide, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so that's what we call phase one. And there's a type of, of images that we're going to talk about. And by the way, we are going to take questions at three different points during this webinar. You can type them in to uh, your dashboard at any time, and John will be moderating those for us. Yeah, there's a thing that you can click on that says questions, and you can just type it in. Absolutely. 
Um, but we're not going to answer them until we get to one of those question marks. So <laughs> don't lose your questions. Go ahead and write them in. But you know, just because we don't answer it right away doesn't mean that we aren't going to, right? Exactly. Okay, that's fair. Okay, so phase one, advertising and prospecting. Phase two mm -hmm. is what we call building credibility and closing. So you're going to have a different set of images that you use for that. You know, once people already, you have a first contact with someone, but they, um, you know, maybe haven't bought yet for whatever reason. They're still considering their options. They're investigating you and all your competitors. They're looking at all of the, the data. Um, you know, you need to provide some more details and uh, some different types of images help you build credibility and close the sale, right? Yes. Okay. And then um, phase three, resales, recaptures, and referrals. So when ads fall flat, a lot of the time, the reason that that happens is because you were trying to do either the wrong thing at the wrong time, or you were trying to do everything at the same time. You lost your focus. You lost your focus, exactly. So you can really only expect uh, an advertisement or an image to do a really good job at one of these three things, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And the reason for that is because there's different actions that you want people to take at different points uh, in this process. So we're going to talk about what are the best kinds of images to use at each of these three places and, um, you know, how to, to create better ones and how to make them perform better. Sound good? Well, to me, but, you know. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> cool. Um, you can give me a thumbs up or, or anything else in the, the chat window if you have a thought or if you have a, a comment or anything else. Um, so I know that if we're preaching to the choir or if you need more convincing. <laughs> okay. So phase one, advertising and prospecting. Um, let's talk about some of the things that happen uh, in phase one. Um, you know, things like podcasts, um, webinars like this one. Trade shows, public speaking, uh, you may have some, some images that you want to hand out, Facebook ads, um, prospecting packages, you know, you may send out a direct mail package of some kind that has some images in it, um, postcards, we could go on for days, you know, there's also magazines, um, there's also billboards, some folks are actually doing TV, now that TV is getting so segmented, uh, there may be a local uh, TV show or um, a niche TV show, uh, you know, like Airplane Repo is a pretty good example of uh, something that is very, very specific and things for advertising and aviation product or service, right? And YouTube. And YouTube, absolutely, video. Um, and that counts somewhere in, in the social media category. Um, you know, there may be information packages that you send out. There might be some personalized note cards and other kinds of things. So all of this happens. Basically, what we're doing here is looking at what is the first contact that people have with you. Now, this is an ad that we've run uh, in social media and um, as a postcard uh, that's worked reasonably well, um, afraid to make sales calls. This is something that people see and they have a visceral response to. You know, if they've ever been in the situation where, oh my gosh, I have to pick up the phone and do something that I really hate doing, uh, this image is going to resonate for them. And um, so when you look at this image, some of the things that we did are we've got a little bit of text, not a lot. You know, we could do the same text and have not nearly the same response. Most of the ads dominated by this dude with a red phone. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason the phone is red. Right? <laughs> a black phone just wouldn't have that jangly response in your stomach, right? <laughs> um, so, you know, there are some things about this ad that are just not, um, uh, you know, that are, are, are really, really clear. If we were to do the same ad in text, it just doesn't have the same impact, right? right. And you can put a lot more detail into it, but it just isn't as good as a first contact. Something like this would be, um, you know, good as maybe a second contact after they've responded to the first because then we know we've set the hook. Uh, then we can provide more information. But this is a mistake that a lot of people make as they run this ad, this number two, um, in a, something that we would call a number two in a sequence as a number one. Does that make sense? Uh, well, no, it doesn't make sense. Okay. Why would you do that? 
Oh, okay. Well, what I'm saying is that I've seen this. <laughs> I've seen you this occur. Clear, right? Okay. okay. So <laughs> running this ad first instead of a, a number two slot following something else is a bad idea. Exactly. Yep. So this is not a good primary ad or not a good first impression ad. This is a good follow-up ad. Yep. Okay? Cool. So um, some of the things that people do um, for uh, these primary ads are photos and video, and we're going to talk a little bit more about how to make your photos and video really stand out and work well. Uh, we did an interview with Scott Slocum not too long ago, and if you Google Scott Slocum and ABCI, uh, you'll find that video. It's actually, um, or that, uh, that interview, it's actually a really good one. Um, and he talks about how he does photos and video that are very arresting, you know, that make people stop uh, whatever they're doing, stop flipping pages, <laughs> and say, wow, right? Mm -hmm. um, this is one of his images, and, uh, you know, the things that he talks about are simplicity, right? All of the stuff that is not essential to this picture is dark, uh, you know, darker than, than what he wants you to see first. So, you know, you want to get rid of anything that is uh, extraneous details and, and things like that. Um, he spends a lot of time cleaning up uh, everything before he does a photo shoot. And, I would, you know, I think in the interview he talked about how, you know, 50% or more of the time of a good photographer is involved in manual labor, <laughs> moving stuff, cleaning stuff, um, you know, making the shot perfect before he even gets his camera out and gets, you know, the lighting set up and everything else just to see what's in the way that we need to get rid of, you know, if there's probably a bunch of stuff off to the sides of this picture that we're not seeing, all the tugs and vehicles and equipment and chocks and, you know, there is nothing here that is not essential to the picture, right? Right. So, um, simplicity, um, we're talking uh, subject matter, you know, this is something that's going to um, capture the imagination of anybody who's involved with aviation because it's a, an absolutely beautiful, iconic, fabulous airplane. Um, so, you know, the subject matter, the simplicity, the lighting, um, when you look at this, airplanes are probably the hardest things in the world, some of the hardest things in the world to get good photographs of, right? So when we work with photographers, a lot of them will have a whole trailer full of lighting equipment and one little camera, you know, or two little cameras or, you know, the, the camera equipment is really not nearly as important uh, or as rare as the lighting equipment that they have. They'll have dozens or even, you know, 20, 30 lights, small lights that they use to light the surface of an airplane because it's shiny and it's cylindrical and it's hard to, to get a great picture of. Which so. is why in-flight pictures are so darn expensive. they got to get the light just right and you only have a short window to make it. Yeah, exactly. So you got to have sunrise, sunset, uh, you know, whatever the situation is, you got to have the lighting perfect. So, um, you know, think about simplicity, think about subject matter, think about lighting. You know, there's a lot of things that you can do. And you, you think about these things even when you're selecting stock photography that you want to use for your images or that you want to use for your advertisements. So um, let's talk about video. Um, you, can, you know you can get stock photography, right, from lots of different places. There's a photo bucket. There's, um, and I think these are on the sheet over there. Um, there's photo bucket, there's uh, Getty images, there's iStock photo, there's Dreams Time, there's all of those things that you can get from uh, um, from those things. Um, are there any that I didn't mention? I think that was it. Take your own and hire a photographer. <laughs> oh yeah, take your own and hire a photographer. So hire a good photographer. All right. So what can you do about stock video? And, you know, there's a lot of, of places that are using video that didn't used to. Um, social media is able to use uh, video, and they actually prioritize video so that you're more likely to get more views on a video ad than on a static ad. Um, there's lots of places you can get stock video. Aero Media Group, um, that's Scott Slunkham's company. We'll um, give him a plug because he helped us out with some of this uh, material. Um, has a stock pool, and I know if you call Scott and you have a specific need for a particular piece of video, you need an engine 
um, you know, a jet engine that is turn rotating slowly, you know, I mean, whatever it is that you need, he can probably find it or take it or, um, you know, find somebody who already has something that you can use. Uh, very, very good at the aviation specialty stock video, right? Hmm. Um, you can use Keynote or PowerPoint to make a video, especially if you're doing something like a product demo or um, an illustration of how something works, an animation, things like that. Um, you can add voiceover or music to your Keynote or PowerPoint to make that more compelling. Uh, if you really have stage fright, you can get some nice uh, music from some of the stock music. You look for license free music on the internet and there's lots of places where you can find, find that that you can buy uh, or use for free. Uh, line drawing and animated videos. There's lots of software nowadays that will let you do these line drawing or animated videos that are really cool. Um, and then the other thing is Facebook Live. Um, it's a great way to get video clips really easily. You have to be brave because it is live. <laughs> um, you know, and once again, you want to be sure you can simplify your background, uh, be careful of your lighting and all of those other elements that we talked about to make that worthwhile. So why would you use images or video um, on social media? Um, or any other place. If you look at, you know, one of the neat things about looking at social media is it gives you all of the stats, right? Uh -huh. So, you know, if you want to look at some of this stuff and then you think about um, how effective are these things in other media, I suspect that there's probably some similarities. You know, so if Facebook video is more effective, um, how would it be in a kiosk in a trade show? You know, a lot of these things carry over from one media to another, right? But if you look at some of these things, which were our best performing, and this is our Facebook insights for maybe the last couple of weeks, but if we look at this, what were our best performing um, posts? They were this one, um, and you can see here the reach was about a thousand people, um, the engagement in, as far as uh, um, clicks, likes, comments, and, and everything else, these numbers are, are higher than the others. We don't have to worry too much about the the details here, but what we're looking for is things with fairly high numbers. Um, so I'm going to circle a couple here and then we'll look at what kind of post were they. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. I thought there was maybe room for one more video on here. But the best performers, if we were to take the top three out of the last two weeks, um, they were uh, number one was a video, right? Mm -hmm. um, and they only show you this because it's, you know, the, the cute little icons, uh, what type it was, and it shows you the little video icon. Um, number two and three were images. And we only had one video. So the one video that we did outperformed everything else that we did by um, quite a bit as far as engagement goes and uh, didn't quite get as high as this, uh, this other image or this other picture. But certainly they were much better than links or quotes or, uh, you know, any other type of post, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I suspect in the rest of the world, if this is true in Facebook, it's probably true in the rest of the world. Um, video is incredibly powerful as an advertising medium, uh, followed by images uh, in your phase one marketing, right? Yeah, and if you watch the... Uh thing from Apple, you know video is a big deal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're making it a bigger deal. Exactly. If you saw the uh, the keynote for, um, this is, if you're watching this later, this is um, <laughs> the day after the big uh, Apple keynote uh, about app, new Apple products. They had several 30 second video clips that they featured during the keynote and of course they made one big video out of the whole keynote. Uh, and we watched two hours of this thing. Of course we're in marketing so you know we love that sort of thing. Uh, but a lot of people watch that video, and uh, you know, if you really want to get somebody's attention and sell a product, look at the people who are doing it successfully, and those are them, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, you know, if that didn't inspire you to go out and spend an obscene amount of money on a cell phone, I don't know what would. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cool. So, phase one uh, solutions. Once again, you know, we talked about video. We talked about uh, photos. Uh, we talked about using not a whole lot of text until later in the sales process. Uh, you know, you never want to express with text what you can with video, especially in a first contact with a new 
uh, prospective customer. You want to make sure that visual is the first thing that we're talking about. And in aviation, this is even more so than in the rest of the world because we're talking a demographic that is male, um, 35 plus in most cases for the decision makers, um, college educated. They are usually visual kinds of people go into the aviation professions because they process a lot of information when they look at a glass panel dashboard. Uh, in, a, in an airplane. Uh, there are people who have that nature and have been successful in their life because they process visual information very quickly. Hmm. So, you know, photos and videos, absolute hmm. priority as far as marketing goes. Uh, would you agree? Uh, the videos are best, yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Questions? I know there have been a few flashing across the screen as we ignore them before we get to this screen, right? Yeah, no particular order, okay. aside from the fact that the way they're listed on the board. Okay. Any studies on which colors or images work the best? Okay. Somebody picked up on the red telephone, right? Hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, there are some studies about, you know, different reactions that um, different colors make in people. Uh, and also those do evolve over time and they change depending on the culture. So, you know, for example, if you're advertising in the United States, uh, almost every aviation ad that you see is going to use blue in it, and the reason is because blue is pretty traditional for aviation companies. Uh, it connotes trustworthiness, you know, brings the sky to mind, you know, does lots of other things that aviation companies really love. So if you were to walk through any given aisle at NBAA and count the number of blue logos, you're going to see 75% of the aviation companies have blue as one of the predominant colors in their logo. Um, but if you want to be different, which we all do, right? We want ours to stand out. We want to use a, a contrasting color, so something on the other end of the color wheel from blue, especially if your logo is blue. You want to have something that's going to stand out. And uh, so, you know, we use a lot of red and a lot of yellow. So primary colors are, are probably best for this demographic and blue and yellow, or sorry, and red and yellow are, are kind of action colors that stand out against the traditional, trustworthy, fabulous, boring blue, right? And then you would suggest that you have to have somebody that can, uh, <clears throat> knows that stuff and which ones to put where. Exactly. So, you know, if you're working with a, a marketing company or an advertising company, um, they will probably use some of this reasoning and they may show you some statistics about, you know, which colors work best. Um, there's also some trendy things like green right now is a big advertising uh, color and, you know, that kind of connotes new or healthy or green, meaning, you know, we're eco-friendly, you know, all those kinds of things. So there's lots of things that change over time. But uh, um, a good artist or, or, or marketing company can guide you to the right uh, decisions there. So according to Facebook, the best ads have 20% text or less. Is that true in other media? I think so. Um, you know, I think even the best slides, uh, if you're doing a sales presentation or, you know, if you're doing any kind of video, and especially for a first impression, I think less than 20% text is probably a really good way to go. Um, so that's a, a an excellent question and thank you for that. And I think that's the last one. That's it so for now? Far. Okay, cool. All right, so carrying on. Um, and once again, you can enter a question at any time and we'll, we'll get to it. Um, so phase two, building credibility and closing sales. What are some of the things that happen uh, in this phase? Um, you know, things like you know, somebody's already responded to an ad of yours and maybe picked up the phone and called you and made an appointment or whatever, um, then you might be sending them regular emails or newsletters, things like that. Uh, printed and mailed newsletters is one of our favorites, especially postcards. Um, social media connections, you know, where you have already connected with someone but you're just um, adding something to your newsfeed to maybe update some information and other things like that. Um, direct mail promotions where this isn't the first contact but someone has uh, called you and requested some more information, things like that. Um, now, when we're talking about this, most marketing companies are going to um, encourage you to spend most of your time and money on phase one. Uh, what's different about aviation 
than the rest of the world is that we have a really, really long phase two, right? People don't make snap decisions. Everything is complicated. Um, you know, they have to get budgets approved. They have to consult with other people. They have to get other people on board. Um, you know, it can sometimes take um, months or even years to make a decision to make a purchase of a fleet of aircraft, you know? I mean, these are things that don't happen overnight. So there's a lot of this interaction that's going to take place. And if there is a mistake that happens a lot in aviation that kills a lot of sales, it's a weak phase two in your sales process, right? Sure. People uh, stop following up or... Yeah. Yeah. And they take for granted, you know, well, this company is only looking at us or they're only interested in us. They're not looking at our competitors. That's BS. <laughs> you know oh, they are. They're not interested because they didn't buy the third time I cucked to them. Exactly. I mean, people call you and try to sell you things all the time, John, and sometimes you put them off 15 times before you buy from them. And not intentionally, but that's just the way it works. You know, the first time we bought an airplane, we took six months to agree to it. And another three, four months to actually arrange financing and get it purchased and pick it up. Exactly. And a lot of times people will need to hire a person or um, even uh, spin off a company or, you know, do any number of things before they can make a purchase uh, in this industry. It's not, <laughs> it's not the Snickers bar at the check stand. Yeah, and it wasn't like we were, uh, didn't have all the ducks. We just life gets in the way sometimes as does budgeting <laughs> exactly so it's not like you were dodging the sales guy or you know annoyed that he was calling you for the 30th time no actually it was something i wanted to do it was just putting it together exactly so you never want to underestimate the amount of this that needs to go on and i like to mix it up so that it's not a, a call i don't want to have to call my prospects every week and say so how are we doing how, you know how's the budget coming did you get somebody hired? Are you ready to, to work with us? And because I'm in sales and marketing, uh, the last time I bought something of significance that is financially significant, mm -hmm. um, I got to the point where things just weren't working out, and I told them, I said, call me the middle of the month every month until I buy. <laughs> because I wanted to buy it. Yeah. I just couldn't get a number of things working together to make it happen. Exactly. So, um, you know, make those sales calls, but also do some of these other things just to mix it up a little bit. Um, you know, send some emails. Um, you know, if you have a tip of the week or something for people in your target market, um, that's a great reason to send an email and keep your contact information at the top of their inbox. Um, if you want to involve them in your social media conversations, um, you know, you can tag somebody in a post and say, you know, this is similar to what we were talking about, um, and here's a case study. Uh, about that topic, or here's an article about that topic. Um, your printed and mailed newsletters, uh, you might want to let people know, you know, our company's expanding and growing. We have new products and services. We've updated this uh, system, you know, other kinds of things that you might want to let people know. Um, we like to send to everybody that uh, has inquired uh, about our services a big blue folder with all of our products and services because it may be that something else that we have, they don't know that we do. You know, they contacted us about um, trade shows, but they don't know, they don't realize that we also produce podcasts for people. Um, so, you know, letting them know that is, is really helpful. So that's what phase two is all about. And there it is bigger. <laughs> okay, so some of the things that you can use in phase two would be things like diagrams. And this is a, a diagram from Sandler Sales, um, you know, talking about sales success and sales techniques and other kinds of things, where you're taking a concept, especially something that you've already presented to them in some form or another. They know what we're talking about when we're talking about um, attitude, behaviors, and techniques. But if we've talked to someone about sales training, but we haven't contracted with them yet, um, you know, this diagram would be something that we might want to include in our sales materials in those uh, direct mail packages or social media conversations, other kinds of things, to remind them of something they already know uh, in a visual way, right? Yeah. Okay. Here's another example of a, of a diagram that we've used in different things. Um, it's really, really simple. Two colors, shows progression, shows relationship, um, you know, other kinds of things. So you want to think about 
how can I convey this idea in the simplest visual way? Um, you know, using colors, shapes, words, and other kinds of things. So, um, you know, that's another example of a diagram. And those are great for phase two because they do a nice job of explaining to people what um, they already know or, you know, reinforcing a concept. And the things that you want to do in your phase two are building credibility, taking up time, you know, so that you have some reason to contact them every week while time is going by um, until they get their new budget or their person hired or um, approvals from everybody on their list or whatever the situation is. And you also want to build urgency, give them more reasons that they want to buy your thing, your product or service, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So that's phase two and diagrams. So questions about um, phase two media images and so on. Uh, well we got several questions coming in but cool. with respect to this topic so far <laughs> what uh, what about hand-drawn diagrams like whiteboards okay yeah Rand Fishkin at uh, SEO Mo's, um has a pretty famous whiteboard whiteboard Friday um, where he will explain a concept on a whiteboard and he'll use all kinds of diagrams and it's actually really fascinating the way he does that. Um, it might be worth watching even if you have no interest in SEO <laughs> just because you know you might be able to sell your product or service this way especially if it's something that's complex. Uh, you know it really shows that you know your stuff, it really shows the benefits of what you're doing. Uh, you can get into a lot of detail using a whiteboard. Uh, two caveats to that, one is that um, Rand is really good at this. He's got fantastic writing and drawing skills, or whoever does the whiteboards for him. Um, make this look really good. Uh, not everybody can write on a whiteboard <laughs> and, and make it make sense and make it, you know, really, really clear and legible and everything else. Yeah, practice a little bit if you're going to do that. Exactly. Um, so, you know, that might be your thing and that might be a really good thing and that's a great way to, uh, you know, take up time during your phase two. What are some tools for making diagrams? Now, I suppose they're talking about electronically because I don't know of any for a whiteboard. Right, right. Well, on a whiteboard, you can use a stencil or a ruler <laughs> or you know, other kinds of things to make it look fabulous. Or freehand. Or freehand, if you're that good. <laughs> um, I'm not, but uh, some people are. So you know, find somebody in your office that, that draws really well. As far as tools go to make them electronically, one of my favorites is um, Visio. If you're on non-Apple products, um, we switched our office entirely to Apple. So I've switched uh, from Visio, which doesn't work on Apple, uh, on Apple OS, to OmniGraffle, which has its pros and cons. Um, it also has some really good templates. It's not as simple to use, but it has a lot more bells and whistles than, uh, than Visio. Um, you can also do diagrams in things like Keynote or PowerPoint. They have some diagram um, utilities. Uh, another one is Canva, C-A-N-V-A, uh, which has some really great diagramming tools. And they actually, they've just added like charts and graphs to their product and uh, most of what they do is free. So, you know, sometimes you can buy clip art from them and that's how they make their money and, you know, they sometimes run ads and things, but you can use the tools uh, for free. So Canva is another one. Microsoft Excel, I think, is uh, underutilized as a charts and graphs um, image maker, right? Yep. Yeah. So what are your favorites? Do you have anything that you use to make a diagram with? Well, I have learned on the graffle. I never was very good at Visio. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing because we have now Apple products, but uh, I don't do that much of that anymore. You do that. <laughs> that's true. Get somebody else in your office to do them. Um, that's one method. Uh, there's also, you know, some other... Um, resources like Fiverr, you know, where if you can draw something on the back of a napkin or and scan it in or whatever and stuff, you can get an artist to draw it for you. Uh, so, you know, those are, are ways to do that in a not terribly expensive way. True. 
Yeah. Okay, cool. So um, any other questions so far? Uh, not on this topic. Okay, cool. So we'll keep going and carry on. Maybe. Okay, so phase three. Referrals, resales, and recaptures. Now this is where the money is made in the aviation industry, right? Yep. Um, you know, a lot of aviation companies don't make a whole lot on their first sale to a new customer. They make most of their sales on what we call customer lifetime value, uh, meaning their repeat sales and referrals and recaptures from that same person uh, or that same company. So, you know, for example, your first sale to um, a Boeing or a Lockheed Martin or, uh, you know, one of the whales in the industry, people will sometimes um, not make a whole lot of money on those because they spend so much money in the marketing process because it takes so long and, you know, they they sent their sales guy down there four times to make sales presentations and uh, developed a lot of, of materials just in order to get that business. So, you know, some people actually lose money on the first sale to a big customer in order to get those repeat sales um, and referrals and recaptures. And the good news is in the aviation industry, a lot of customers are incredibly loyal. Uh, you know, once they have a relationship with you and they know, like, and trust you, um, they'll give you more business uh, and also some uh, great referrals and things like that. So a lot of our clients make 50% or more of their money on um, what we call phase three activities, resales, recaptures, and referrals. So I'm going to blow this up just a little bit and show you some of the things that are in phase three. And there we go. All right. So things that might you might include here would be things like a new customer package. Um, you know, and a lot of times I know John, when you bought the Skyhawks, you got a whole boatload of goodies from Cessna. <laughs> <laughs> He's got Cessna stuff all over his office, um, flashlights and key fobs and picture frames and, you know. Yeah, and a, and a cleanup kit as well. Mm -hmm. And t-shirts and... And a three-day in house We picked up the factory and they wouldn't let me fly it until I had three days in their... <clears throat> what would you call it? It's not a simulator, but... Uh, classroom. Classroom slash simulator. We did both. Yeah. And then, we, then I flew with the test pilot on a customer acceptance flight. Mm -hmm. and right. And uh, there I got their IP to take me around and bring me up to speed on my instrument and so forth. So. Right. So that's going to vary depending on the size of the product or service that they bought from you, of course. But even if someone buys insurance from you, you want to make sure that they get something physical, you know, some box in the mail that has a coffee mug and a, a binder full of documents and, you know, um, some uh, some information, maybe even a, a hat, some things that uh, are going to be around, some physical things that also are going to make other people ask this person, you know, oh, you're doing business with that company, you know, you just bought a, um, a Cessna. <laughs> You know, and then of course, you know, having just made the purchase, John's going to be all excited about it and happy to show it off and, and tell you all about it. So this is the best opportunity to get those referrals, resells, and recaptures. So you want to make sure that somebody has lots of reasons to talk about you mm -hmm. because of things in their office or things that they're wearing or things in their flight bag or, you know, whatever, right? Yes. Okay. Um, so customer satisfaction survey, um, you know, you may want to include some things there, but that's not a terribly visual thing. Um, thank you gifts, once again, you know, those coffee mugs, those um, other things that are going to be hanging around their office for a while. Um, a lot of people will do an anniversary gift. Um, you know, you've been with us for five years or ten years or whatever the situation is, get them a plaque, something that will hang on the wall, you know, something like that that uh, is going to uh, show that off. A lot of people do calendars which are great because they have your name on the wall uh, if they use this calendar. So it has to be a really cool calendar. <laughs> um, I know Snap-on Tools does a nice calendar. Um, Charlie Bravo Aviation does a, a calendar that we talked about in our podcast about um, sex sales <laughs> with beautiful women and air airplanes and things like that. Um, depending on your audience, that might be a really great way to go because obviously it's something that they're going to hang in their office and it attracts a lot of attention and has 
um, your logo on it. Um, referral incentive packages, um, weekly emails, you know, once again, um, printed newsletters, social media conversations, greeting cards, um, you know, direct mail promotions, all of these things need some kind of images. They can't be just text, right? Yeah, okay. So in your phase three, the, the primary image that you want to use is your logo, right? Mm -hmm. So if we do a real quick recap of, you know, when you're going to use the heck out of your logo, it's right there in phase three, right? Um, so in phase one, you're going to use, you know, your logo is going to be maybe a very, very tiny percentage, um, you know, we'll say maybe 5% of the visuals that you use in your marketing is going to have your logo in it. Um, phase two, uh, your logo is going to take up, we're going to say, you know, a little bit more, maybe 10% of the space of all of these things that you send out so that every email you send out, every newsletter you send out, um, every social media post and other kinds of things, those are going to be associated with your logo, but it's not going to be dominating the scene. Um, in phase three, your logo is pretty much the primary <laughs> primary image you want to use. You want your logo to be um, omnipresent in their office, in their airplane, in their, you know, whatever it is. So that they can't turn around in their office without seeing something from you um, that is, and I'm exaggerating here, you don't, uh, this needs to be in proportion to the product or service that they buy from you. Uh, but you'll see people who have nothing but Harley Davidson in their office. And, you know, obviously they're a really good customer of Harley Davidson. Um, and, you know, they do a really nice job of, of doing the heck out of their logo. So that is phase one, phase two, and phase three in terms of where and when to use your logo. Another thing you're going to want to do in phase three is use tables and graphs. Um, you know, this would be a thing that would resell your product or service and reconfirm their decision, you know, that they made a really good decision. Um, you know, nine out of ten people are using our product or service. Um, you know, whatever point you want to make using charts and graphs because they're going to show these to the people that question their decision <laughs> to justify that they made a good choice. So if you can arm them with great tables and graphs, they will use them more in phase three than any other place, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Another thing you can use is cartoons because they will share these with their friends and neighbors and coworkers and other folks, you know, talking about how smart they are because they did business with you uh, and problems that other people have that uh, maybe are not so smart, right? This was used quite effectively by IBM for about 20 years. Cartoons? No, no, no. No, what you just said. The charts and graphs? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, charts and graphs are, uh, people are always, there's always um, about three days after someone makes a purchase, they have a, um, what do you call it, a second decision point. Uh, where they're either going to confirm or feel weird about having just made a decision. It's just a psychological phenomenon that happens after people have already committed to something. Um, and that's why in a lot of states you can reverse a purchase up to three days after the fact or after the point of making it. Um, you know, they've used your product once or twice. They've talked to people about it. Um, they're going to have a strong reaction one way or another and you want to make sure that that reaction is positive and, and one of the ways that you do that is to make sure that a day or two after they purchased your product they get some fabulous data that they haven't seen before in a very compelling format like charts and graphs, right? Yep. Okay, cool. So back to cartoons. Do you have anything to add to that or? No, nope, that works. That works? Okay. We love cartoons. I think they're fabulous. Um, okay, so Phase three solutions, you know, you want to make sure that they remember the unique experience of doing business with you. Um, you want to provide consistency uh, and you want to provide pretty much constant reminders that they have made a fabulous decision. And how do you do that? You do that with logo products and um, tchotchkes and everything else. It always makes me crazy when people are giving these things away at trade shows because it's a phase one activity and they're doing a phase three thing and they wonder why they spent hundreds of dollars on pens and never get anything out of it, right? Right. Ah, that makes me nuts. It's a random act of marketing, right? <laughs> okay, cool. So that's phase three. Questions about phase three? 
Um, a couple are very close. So basically, what are some of the best branded novelties? Best branded novelties. We love, um, we already talked about this, we love calendars because they're on the wall. Um, you know, people will actually use those and use them every day, ideally, uh, if it, especially if it's a really good, handy format of a, of a calendar. Um, we also really like memo pads that have your logo on every page because that's potentially, you know, if you give somebody a, a 200 sheet memo pad <laughs> and they use it and they use it to pass notes within their company or to colleagues and things like that, that's potentially 200 little advertisements that they're passing around with your logo on them, right? Yep. That's a really good um, cost effective uh, way of getting your logo to be omnipresent in somebody's office. Um, coffee mugs are a traditional favorite. Uh, in aviation, flight bags are good, or headset cases. Um, let's see. It used to be the little USB extenders. I've got one sticking out of my computer, so of course I think about that company every time I plug something in. Um, you know, so that's really helpful. So really, um, you want to think about, are people going to be using this in an office or in a shop? Uh, if they're using it in a shop, you might do like rulers or um, what do you use in your shop all the time that has a logo on it that you see? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. I don't think there is one. Well, pressure gauges, toolbox. Oh, you magnets. mean out, out there in the shop? Yeah. Oh. Toolbox magnets are a good one. They're pretty cheap and easy. Actually, I don't have anything that's branded that well out there. Oh, man, there's a huge opportunity. <laughs> uh, you know, those big chunky pencils, I've seen those, um, you know, that people use. Uh, iPad cases, uh, you know, those are really good, especially iPad cases that will also hold a pen or something um, or, you know, those kinds of things that people use. Um, let's see, something that people keep in their pockets, you know, uh, pressure gauges, other kinds of things. So there's lots of, of opportunities. If they're in an office, it's a lot easier <laughs> because any traditional marketing outfit um, can provide you with any number of office toys and squishy things. And, you I guess know, the, the toolbox is, is, uh, is Sears, but I really want a snap-on box one day. <laughs> yeah. Everybody wants a snap-on box one day, right? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Cool. All right. So, you know, those are some options. And, uh, you know, once again, I almost never give those away or recommend that our clients give them away in a trade show. You always want to send them in your new customer packages. So that way you can spend a little bit more money on them and make them more obviously um, a standout item. Uh, and the weirder, the better often. Um, we work with a company that does search engine optimization. They sent us a, a big stuffed animal with a big red hoth um, <laughs> creature. <laughs> um, you know, and that was unusual. It, we don't have it hanging out in our office anywhere, but I'm sure a lot of people do. Um, so yeah, um, the weirder the better, right? Evidently. And the more useful the better. Yeah, the more useful. Okay, cool. All right, so actions. As a result of having come to this webinar, um, hopefully what you will do in the future is to add more visuals to every phase of your marketing system. And uh, in phase one, uh, the things that we talked about are illustrations, photos, and video uh, in particular that uh, are based on emotions and problem solution uh, types of images. So, you know, if you can illustrate that you get uh, the problem that you solve. Um, you know, most people don't do this well enough in terms of, you know, here's our product. Nobody cares what your product is. They care about what my problem is and what problem does your, um, your product or service fix, right? What's your solution? Yeah, exactly. So, you know, I may not care about, you know, that you do, um, X, Y, or Z service, but I do care about the fact that I've got an airplane on the ground and I've got a number to call you, uh, and you tell me you can fix that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So in phase two, you want to use images that help prospects understand key concepts better. So charts, graphs, diagrams, those kinds of things. Um, phase three, you're going to want to use cartoons, 
um, other attention getting visuals that keep you top of mind, explain what else you sell, um, also reconfirm uh, their purchase decision. Uh, once again, we talked about that three-day window in which you know people tend to waffle a little bit, especially after spending a lot of money, um, where they're going to wonder, you know, did I make a good decision or not? So you want to provide them with good ammunition to support their decision and defend it to the naysayers in their organization, right? And let me add this: if you buy into the concept that a picture is worth a thousand words, realize that video mm -hmm. typically will take 30 pictures per second. That's true. And we've actually worked with companies that use video for every one of these phases, um, phase one, phase two, and phase three. It's just that they understand that it's accomplishing a different task in each phase, right? Yep. Okay, so you have a different, um, if you wanted to use a, a video in phase three as an example, you might have a welcome message from the um, president of the company saying, you just made a fabulous decision. We're glad to have you um, as a customer. Here are some of the ways we're gonna support uh, making you successful with our product or service mm -hmm. um, and then outline three points and you know that's a fantastic video that uh, would go in your new customer welcome kit um, another thing that you're going to want to do is think about where you use logos so once again you don't want to overuse your logo in phase one um, you want to be really moderate about it in phase two and then you want to do the heck out of it in phase three logo everything right Okay, because they already know, like, and trust you. You want to reinforce that decision, and you also want to give them lots of opportunities to talk about you. Um, so that's uh, the purpose of that. Okay, so we have a free tip sheet that you can download, um, charts, graphs, tables, diagrams, um, how to make better ones, different tools you can use, different formats you can copy, um, other things like that. So you can get that from abci1.com forward slash charts. Um, go ahead and, and download that um, and go sell more stuff, right? Yeah, America needs a business. Exactly. Zig Ziglar. So um, that is pretty much the conclusion of our presentation. If you are one of our clients, um, if you are not one of our clients and want to be, you may want to stick around uh, for this next bit. Um, we do have a special offer if you sell something in aviation um, and if you understand that marketing is not magic, we have what we call our insider circle, um, which is basically our group of clients. We like for them to talk to each other. A lot of marketing companies do not like for their customers to talk to each other. <laughs> we take the opposite tack. We think in the aviation industry, it's really good uh, for people to uh, be involved with each other, to talk about what works, what doesn't work. Um, you know, there's a lot of co-marketing that happens um, where people can split the cost of doing something, uh, do different promotions together, other kinds of things. They can talk about what's worked and what hasn't worked for them. Um, so our insider circle is really built to help our customers get to know each other, um, talk to each other, and potentially uh, work together on some things and save some, some time and money. Um, another thing that we do with our customers is we offer office hours. Um, once a month, we like to get together with each of our clients, talk about what's working, what's not working, um, give them some statistics about the work that we're doing for them, uh, and also talk about what they've got coming up so that we make sure that we're um, being consistent with everything going on in their life and their company. Um, projects, we've got different uh, things that we do for, for customers, and we use the um, software Basecamp to keep their projects or organized so that you've got all of the the documents and all of the collaboration about a particular product project in one place and uh, you can invite people from your company to share those documents and other kinds of things and collaborate with us. So project management is a really big thing with us. Um, destinations, those are things that we do for you. Um, for example, if you want us to handle all of your content marketing, we can put together the editorial calendar, we can brainstorm topics, we can give you drafts, you approve the drafts, we publish them for you, um, you know, lots of things that we can do with that or you know, anything you'd like to outsource with us. We have a book club. Uh, some of our members really like uh, and refer to the books that we send out in our book club. Um, we send out one book a month and then we have an opportunity to talk about it together, which gives our, our customers the, um, the chance to interact with each other and to talk about 
what's in the media, you know, because there's a lot of sales and marketing books out there that are appropriate for aviation and a lot that are really not, uh, that were written for retail. Uh, and so people can go really far wrong by following some of the popular advice in sales and marketing um, if it's not really meant for, not for us, not for our market, right? Absolutely. Okay. We have our briefing room where you can get to old uh, webinars. So, you know, if you're wondering how to optimize your LinkedIn profile at 4 o'clock in the morning before you have a meeting tomorrow with somebody who you know is looking you up <laughs> on LinkedIn, um, you can find it there in the briefing room, and uh, we keep all of those there. Um, our what we, our insider circle is risk-free, um, and actually all of our products and services are risk-free because we have a 30-day money-back guarantee on anything that we do. Um, Aviation is a small world. We cannot afford to have an unhappy customer, so that's why everything um, has that 30-day money-back guarantee. Talking about that three-day window of indecision, this gives you 30 days to be indecisive, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, there is no long-term contract. Uh, we want to make sure that we're uh, doing what's best for you in the, the short, medium, and, and long term. Um, so we, we do month to month contracting. Um, and if it's not for you, you lose nothing. So, um, and this is Gene Clo. He's one of our, uh, one of our customers that uh, sent us a really nice testimonial about uh, our insider circle. We used to call it our marketing masterclass, but change the name. Anyway, um, he says it's worth every penny, which was really nice of him to say, right? Yes, it was. Okay. Um, there's also free advertising opportunities. Um, insiders get $347 in free advertising opportunities each month, um, and that includes advertising on our podcast, advertising in our resource directory, um, you know, lots of different places where we will help uh, promote your product or service, not only to our insiders, but to everyone else. All right, so if you are interested in this, um, we would be happy to put together a free one or two minute video, video that would be an explainer or product demo uh, that, we, that you can use on your social media uh, about your product or service. So if you are interested, um, basically you browse to abci1.com uh, forward slash insider circle, scroll to the bottom to silver or gold, enter your credit card information and uh, once again, your satisfaction is absolutely guaranteed. So you have 30 days to decide whether or not you made a good decision. Um, the video will be yours to keep. Um, you get to, uh, to use that in your social media and so on um, just for trying us out and checking out the Insider Circle, right? Yep. Okay, absolutely. So thank you for joining us. Um, we'll take questions about anything our time is just about up, but uh, we'll stay on the line for as long as there are questions. And I see there is one. How much does the insider circle cost, right? Ah, good. Yeah. Yes. And that is, uh, it's actually 279 a month for um, the silver level. And you, of course, get the free video with that. So, um, and that offer is good through September 30th, 2017. Uh, anybody that joins us before September 30th of 2017 at a silver or gold level will get that uh, that free explainer video. So um, one more question, do I have to provide you with a video? <laughs> and if you have some video, you know, that's great. We'll produce it for you and create the one or two minute video for you. If not, we'll use uh, stills. We'll, we'll consult with you about what you have that we can use. Um, if all else fails, we'll use stock photography and do a um, do a slideshow or a demo or you know something along those lines that really explains the benefit of your product or service, right? So that's that phase one video, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So thank you for joining us. That's all the questions we have, and uh, we will see you next time. See you later. Ciao. Cool.